Hey there, in this tutorial, I'll be showing you my six step process I use to get consistent, pro quality, and heavy drum mixes that sound good on any speaker or listening device. So, if you want to learn how I do this, hit the subscribe button down below and let's get started. Now, like I just said, this is a six step process and you cannot afford to skip any of these steps if you want consistent, pro quality, and heavy drum mixes every time. So, you need to be patient. And if you don't have the time, just save this video and come back to it. So you need to be patient and watch through each of these steps and understand it. What really matters is that you understand each of these steps so you know how best to apply it in your own situation, okay? So right here, we have my drum track. So the first thing we do is make sure it's all linked to the mixer. And then we're going to do gain staging, okay? And most times you want to start with your kick because that's the easiest point of reference. You can start with your kick or your snare, but I find starting with my kick a lot easier. So I'll be starting with my kick here. Then I'll just create some headroom, bring it down a little bit by like two to four dB. Perfect. So next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to load up the next most recurring sound. Most times it could be your snare or your rim shots, depending on the genre you make. I'm going to take it all the way down, then bring it up till it sounds good in relative level to my kick. Then I'll turn on the next most recurring sound. Then turn this on as well. Perfect, then I'll turn on the next one. So before we go any further, I want to let you know you can get our courses. The link is in the description below. The course will take you from start to finish, beginner to pro, on how to mix and master not just beats or not just drums, but beats, drums, vocals, melodies, and even how to master to professional levels that you can upload your songs to Spotify. It's an in-depth tutorial with all the terms that you need to know explained and all the resources you need to know shown. No gatekeeping, nothing is hidden. All is well explained in great detail. 
for you to learn and get really good results. So if you need the course, you can click the link in the description below. The course is a, it's a learn at your own pace course. It will be delivered to your email and you watch the videos at your own pace and you learn and you practice, you learn and you practice at your own pace. All right, let's get back to the lesson. All right, so I've gotten my balance. Now it may seem like, you know, it's not much of a difference in terms of like how closing knobs are to each other but in mixing. Even just one dB can make a difference. That's one decibel can make a difference in your mix. So you don't, it doesn't even need to be too far apart. Most times they are going to be like just revolving around the same um, region, but you just want it to be as clear and as balanced as much as you possibly can make it to sound, okay? So when you're again staging, you need to be careful of a few things. First of all, you need to make sure that you're not playing with your gain knob or your loudness knob on your audio interface it needs to be as consistent as possible you can just set it to a point where it's loud enough for you to hear the elements but at the same time it's not so loud that you can't talk comfortably over the audio okay it should not be too loud and at the same time it should not be too low in volume and secondly when you're again staging you need to be careful with the faders bring when you bring it down bring it up gradually bit by bit and hear how it changes the entire mix because when you're again staging when you bring in a new sound or turn on a new sound, it may affect a previous um, element in the mix. So you may need to go back to one of the other sounds and turn it down or turn it up a little bit, okay? But if you see yourself doing serious changes all the time, then it's not well against stages. You need to go back again and balance it up properly, okay? So this is a process you need to be patient with. You don't need to, you don't need to rush this. Just be patient, take your time and get it right, okay? All right, so now we're done balancing our drums. The next thing we need to do is use an EQ to remove unwanted or unnecessary frequencies from each of our drum sounds, okay? So I'm going to start with my kick again. Come to EQ, parametric EQ2. This is a free EQ that comes with FL Studio. Almost every digital audio workstation has an, an EQ or a parametric equalizer like this. So I just want to come right here, right click, type, high pass. The reason I'm doing this for a high pass, it simply means that it's allowing all the high frequencies pass through, okay? And our kick or your kick sounds is typically a low frequency. So it's, this simply means I'm going to allow frequencies higher than 38 hertz pass through, okay? So I'm going to um, relax this a bit because for kicks, because kicks is a bass sound, you don't want to cut too much, it's going to lose its power and its presence, okay? So most times for kicks, somewhere around 30 to 40 hertz is just fine when you're cutting out um, unwanted frequencies, okay? So I'm going to audition on here between 30 and 40. So you can hear the difference. Let me turn on, let me show it so you can really hear. When the EQ is on, off. You can hear it kind of loses some loudness, right? When you EQ and it's typical when you apply effects to most sounds, the loudness level tends to change, okay? But in this case, I think I cut too much. I'll take it back down to about 33 hertz. So 33 hertz is just fine. The reason why I'm doing this is because most speakers can't even reproduce lower than 30 hertz. Most home use speakers and even club speakers can reproduce lower than 30 hertz in most cases. So there's no point in having too much information below that point where it's just affecting your loudness or your headroom. So you just take out that unnecessary or unwanted frequencies, okay? So I'm going to have that there. Then I'm going to turn on my next most recurring sound again. Then load up a parametric EQ again. Now this is more of a high, mid and high frequency sound. So there's really not much going on in the low end. I'll just right click, type high pass order step eight and just sweep all the way to somewhere around here. Again, we're not trying to change the sound like this, no. We're just trying to keep it as natural as possible while we remove unwanted frequencies. Perfect. So we'll go to the next sound. Then come here. Do the same thing, type. I pass and if you observe this is a low frequency to low mid sound so we're going to be careful how we cut it as well 
We don't want to lose the power. Somewhere around 33 heads is fine. Parametric AQ2 again. So now, for now, you don't have to worry about, you know, boosting or, you know, adjusting other frequencies. Remember, we're trying to just remove unwanted frequencies, okay? Here is fine. Then we'll go to the next sound. So I already did this one I was producing. So this is not actually part of the EQ. This is actually a production um, decision. So I'm going to just load up an EQ again. I'll assume it's already rendered. As usual, like I said, when you apply effects, volumes may change, so you may need to gain stage again in, for a few sounds. Right, so I'm going to turn off all the EQs. So you hear it sounds when the EQ is off. So without EQ, and with EQ, you can already hear how much cleaner it sounds in the low end and even in the mids as well it sounds a lot more clean and opened up and this will allow us to get more loudness more headroom and even more weight from our drums okay so the third step we need to take is to pan our drum elements this will help open our drums and gain more balance between the left and the right um speakers when we are listening so it just sounds more cohesive okay so we're going to again start with our kick our kick is the center point most times you most times your kick stay in the middle, okay? So your kick needs to be in the middle. Then 
your snare or your rim shot can be in the middle as well. You can pan it a little bit to the left or right, within about 10% left or right, okay? So, if I were to have a layer that is playing simultaneously or at similar times with my snare or rim shot, then I'll need to pan both in opposite direction. Maybe one about 6%, the other at about 8% or 10%. You just listen and make a decision, okay? So, I don't really have a sound per se that is layered with this um, rim sound. So, I head on to percussion. My percussion is going to go a bit wider. You can go as wide as... 15 20 or even 30 percent depending on how wide you want to go now there's a guide for this if you have a dense production like you have a lot of drum elements you typically want to go wide so that you can have more space in your drum mix okay but if you have like a minimal production you typically want to come around fifth around 15 20 percent so you don't lose too much weight in your drums okay because the wider your drums typically it loses a little bit of weight okay so we don't want to play too wide here so I just pan this a little bit to the left. Then pan this opposite direction. You typically want to pan similar elements or elements that have similar rhythms in opposite directions, okay? So if you observe, I have three hats. I have this. I also have this. And I also have this. So now, one is going to be in the middle, while two in opposite directions, okay? So if you have three sounds that have similar vibes or similar instrumentation, one will stay in the middle while the others are panned in opposite direction for more clarity, okay? And if you have four, two will be closer to the middle, while two uh, will be um, panned or spaced further to the left and to the right, okay? So I have some other sounds in here, so... I'll come to that last. I find this percussion to the right. And again, when you pan, sometimes you can also adjust the, vo the loudness level of the instrument. So feel free to adjust the level. When you pan, I notice drop or increase in volumes. All right, so now we can head to the shakers, start from here. So if you notice, this, this sounds like it's moving from left to right, listening closely. So I'm just going to leave that as it is. I'm not going to pan it left to right. I'll just, I'll just leave that in the middle. Then in this case, pan this to the left. To the right. Now this made my stick here, that is the rim shot too loud. I'm going to reduce the volume a little. Much better. So you always want to be paying attention, analyzing, analyzing, analyzing. So this is how it sounds when it's unpanned. And this is how it sounds when it's panned. Let me know, do you hear any difference between the panned version and the unpanned version? Does it sound clearer or it sounds the same? Make sure you're listening on headphones or on studio grade speakers that have um, left and right channels, okay? So for the fourth step, we're going to create a drum boss. I'm going to highlight each one of my drum track. Then select an empty insert, then right click, track routing, create submix, and I'll just name this drum boss.
now this is they're all routed into this channel right here you see when it's playing because it's, it's turned off you can't hear any of the drum elements but when it's turned on you can hear all the drum elements okay so that's what you want to happen if maybe you made a mistake and one of the sounds is not linked you can just go to that sound for example let's say this guy you can just deselect it from the master then send it into the channel and you have it linked and you can also um, unlink it by clicking this and sending it back to the master it's that simple so for the fourth step we'll be using serial compression and serial compression is just simply using two different compressor settings to control the dynamic range of your track or of your element that's running through it so this is typically is for sounds that have noticeable or high dynamic range for example um guitar vocal sounds that you can hear difference that you can hear a clear difference between the loudest parts and the more quiet parts okay now we don't necessarily have that because these drums were mostly played with midi so there's no obvious dynamic range but still we can still use this to drive some weights into our drums and it's pretty easy first i'm going to use this classic fl studio compressor and you have to be careful when you're compressing drums you want to typically use a smaller ratio setting about two three ratio one or even maybe max 3.5 ratio one and you don't over compress it so it doesn't lose the life then your threshold is typically how loud does the sound source coming in have to be or the number it needs to cross for the compressor to become activated so most times i just like take it halfway and i relax it till i notice that it's no longer squashing the recording you can hear right now it's really working hard if i turn it off you can hear the kick the difference now that is too much i'm going to relax this You can hear it kind of controls and blues the kick. Relax this some more. Okay, that level is just fine and you want let's have a slower attack setting and a slow release setting as well so again so that the drums can breathe perfect before after When it's turned off, notice how the shakers, the sounds that have high frequencies and high mid frequencies, sound a bit more loose and uncontrolled, a little bit in the mix. But when it's turned on, they sound more cohesive, more put together. So let's listen again. Turned off. Turned on. Perfect. So the next compressor we're going to use, you can also use another style of compression for this same plugin. We're going to use CLA76 or an 1176 compressor. And you want to use the stereo, okay? The stereo option, not the mono. Make sure you use stereo because a boss is typically a stereo. Okay, so right here we have this. Now, you have to be careful with an 1176 if you observe. You can control the ratio because this already has a set ratio, okay? But we want to gain or rather target a minus one to minus three dB of gain reduction because we just want the tone from this compressor, not necessarily the um, obvious compression power it has. So I'm going to adjust the input. I already hear the energy is bringing to the drums, but this can easily trick you, especially when it gets too loud. So, we want to try to gain much the before and the after so we can really hear what the compressor is doing. So, I'm going to reduce the output, turn it off, turn it on. Perfect. So, let me turn it off. Let's see if you can hear a difference. Turn, turn it off. Notice the kick, the rim shots, 
and the open heart. So if you can hear it clearly, it's pushing out the percussions to be more upfront. It's pushing out the kick to be more upfront. I mean, the stick is pushing out the stick to be more upfront. So I'm going to reduce this sound. So it was making it too loud. I'm going to reduce that a little bit. Reduce my stick to a little bit. Perfect. So this is how it sounds without serial compression when it's all turned off. Turn on. Now the low end sounds a little bit weaker here, true, but it's more controlled, which we need that control to happen so we can have more weight in the mix okay so we're going to do a parallel compression send it in here a parallel compression is just you sending your boss into an empty insert then squashing that send with a compressor so i'm going to rename this we'll call it parallel comp then i'm going to come to 1176 again And I'm using it to blend it. It sounds good enough. So I'll relax this. You blend it. You like the vibe it's giving. Without it, with it. So even if I try to do a gain match, you can hear the obvious difference. So when the parallel compression is off, so when the parallel compression is off, and when it's on, you can hear it breathing in more life into the drums. Again, you can smash this as much as you want. You can hear the more you smash it, the more percussive, the more pump, the more so the more you smash it, the more so the more you take this up or the more you smash it up, you can hear it sounding having that hard hitting feel. So you know again, the amount you want to use, it all depends on you. Okay, so I'm going to just have it here. So the last and definitely not the least step is using a saturator or an exciter to really enhance the harmonic frequency in the drums. Okay, I'm going to be using Slate Digital's virtual tape machine and just loading it up on the drum bus after the serial compression. You can already hear how it works. It just adds that energy to the drums. Let's hear it with it. Without. With it. You can hear adding more bass, more pump in the low end, and even the other elements like the percussions having more body as well. So this is a bit too much. I'm going to relax this by simply relaxing the inputs. And if you want more of that effect, you can increase the inputs. So relax it.
And just like that, we have our heavy, hard hitting drums that have presence. So let's compare it with and without effects processing, like how it sounded before I did the mix and how it's sounding after the mix. Let's see which is better, okay? So I'm going to render the mix, highlight and eight bar section, and then export it as a WAV file so that the audio quality is similar. So right here we have the mixed and the unmixed drums, okay? So I did a little bit of gain matching so that they are just around the same loudness level when we hear them for fair comparison, okay? Because remember, louder is not always better, okay? So now we're going to listen to the unmixed to see how it sounds. Then we're going to listen to the mix and hear how it sounds and hear which sounds better. If you prefer the unmixed, let me know. If you prefer the mixed, also let me know in the comment section. This is the unmixed. Mixed. I'm going to let it play again and switch continuously between the mixed and unmixed and let me know again which sounds better. So let me know which sounds heavier, which sounds better, which sounds cleaner, more spaced out and, you know, just overall, which sounds better. Let me know in the comments. If you find this helpful, hit the like button and subscribe down below for more tutorials, tips and tricks. I remember Sir Classy. See you soon. Cheers.